cross my fingers. And okay, I think we're good to go. There we go. Well, Thelma, thank you so much for coming on our show, our little tiny show. We hope you're doing all right today. Yeah, yeah, it's my pleasure to join you. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm very much in favor of supporting independent, especially left-wing media. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I wish you, have you only just uh, got together to, to uh, launch this? Or You'd think that, <laughs> you'd think that, but we've actually been doing it for about, I don't know, gosh, since November? Yeah, well, yeah, a little bit earlier, October maybe. So, this yeah, will be episode 32, so yeah, so, so, yeah. so well, I wish you well. weekly episode. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fun. We're having fun doing it, and uh, it's growing slowly. But well, that's the thing. Do you know, I do the podcast with Tom Whitaker. We, we have Sam yeah. and Tom Look Left, and we just really enjoy it every week. Um, well, we and we enjoy really enjoy your show as well. We absolutely love it. All the guests <laughs> you have on and everything. And I think it's fair yeah. to say that while we respect you as uh, for everything you've done with the Labour Party and with the Northern Independence party as well we also just consider you a fellow podcaster you can learn new skills and i never saw myself mm -hmm. as a as a, a podcast host but there you go um so <laughs> yeah, from the club. teacher teacher head teacher mp and now podcast host <laughs> well it, it's only going up so i guess we can just go ahead and start there um Dan and I, we were kind of just looking over your career trajectory and we were really interested in kind of the way that you, as you say, kind of went from head teacher to MP to now um, being such a kind of like pivotal member of the Northern Independence Party. Before we get into kind of the politics of all of that and what made you leave the Labour Party and uh, um, more questions about what you're doing currently, um, could you just run us through your career trajectory for people who might not know and, um, and what well, brought you what from each thing? Politics? Do you want me to go as far back as when I was a teacher? Sure. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, if, if you feel like it's uh, worthwhile or if yeah, it's influenced so, your political think, career, um, because I, it's hard to imagine yeah. being a head teacher doesn't influence how you see politics and what you want to achieve in politics. Yeah, very much so. Um, I, I, I mean, I was always into um, politics and I was a member of the Labour Party for, for nearly 40 years before, before I left. Um, and um, as a teacher and head teacher. I mean, I loved my career in education. I'm still very interested and involved in education. Um, but my last job before I left and went, went devoted myself um, almost completely to, to politics um, was in a school in a deprived area um, with a, a Sure Start Centre. Um, so it served a community that were, many of them really struggling, um, a lot of it in work poverty. And this was at the beginning of austerity, if you like. So I'm sure it's far, far worse now. Um, and um, I, Michael Gove became Secretary of State for Education and you just saw the funding cuts start straight away um, with, with uh, projects like Sure Start, um, Family Outreach, all of those kind of things. Um, and I, it, was a, it became a culture of targets and tests and um, the work that we were doing that was really reaping benefits with, with the family outreach and multi-agency working and all of those things. And you could see it making a difference. I mean, we didn't go far enough and further enough uh, and far enough uh, with Labour as it was then. Um, but it was making a difference. And um, as soon as Gove came in, that culture changed. Um, and I, as a her teacher, I was there to lead a team of staff in a certain direction and um, my own value base and my own educational philosophy didn't sit with with Gove's ideology and I, I would have felt hypocritical to have been asking my staff to, to do something and indeed to be delivering a curriculum uh, the, the time was really broad and balanced and was narrowing and narrowing uh, to deliver this this as I say, culture of targets and tests. And so I decided I couldn't live with myself doing that. Um, Academisation was coming in. I didn't agree with that. And I'm still, I'm at a meeting tomorrow fighting <laughs> um, the closure of a school that's part of a mat and that's part of the academization. I'm still fighting that battle now. Um, but seeing that poverty firsthand and the impact on, um, well, a child's well-being as well as their learning, um, and the, and their mental health and emotional well-being. Um, that's what really made me decide I can't really change this. Even as a head, I can't I can't change the system. But politics is about bringing about change, 
And that's what got me into saying, uh, right, I'm not just going to give out leaflets here. Um, head, te- head teachers are tough job but um uh, you know i discovered that, that being an mp is a really tough job so it's too but it was very good preparation um for for the life of, of 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 a member of parliament um so i devoted myself to to activism um and um as you saw um was elected in 2017 um and uh and it was a privilege to to be um, an MP for two and a half years, not long enough and highly frustrating. Uh, but you, you probably can see, too, that I've not given up. And uh, it, in some ways, um, I feel that I've got more of a voice. I mean, in terms of um, the social media platform, I, you know, it's gone through the roof, really. The followers I've got on Twitter and the number of interviews I've had. Um, and and so I'm kind of thinking sometimes uh, these things happen for a reason. And even though I was devastated when I lost the Cone Valley seat, um, I'm now feeling, um, well, no longer in Labour. And so glad every day that Labour currently do something that where I think, thank God, mm-hmm. I, I really don't have to cover and, and pretend that I agree with this. You know, I couldn't live with myself at the moment. Um, and uh, if I, you know, if I was made to, um, well, actually say, well, I think you're being complicit. If you, if, you know, if you don't call out what Labour are not doing in opposition. Um, so, so yeah, I, I um, left Labour and um, I, I feel liberated because of that, because I can speak out more. And I think I'm getting that message about democratic socialism out more in a way um, than I did um, a, as an MP, which is a bit ironic, really, but it, it, it's true. Um, so uh, yeah, so I, so I. Do you want to know about when I was in Parliament or? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think just real quick, sorry, I'd just like to know, coming from that angle that you did, like coming from a head teacher where you really saw the changes that needed to happen, what did you find the culture like in, in Westminster and in, and in Parliament and in, in the Labour Party as it existed then? Was it what you expected? Was it, it um, slightly more bureaucratic? Well, is, it, it, if I'm honest, I found out more about it since I've left because... Mm-hmm. I was new to it all. You, you, you know, the first few months you go to Westminster, if you're not an experienced politician, which I wasn't, I was, I was a teacher, you know, and um, um, I, you, you're learning the ropes. You're even learning how to find your way around Westminster, you know. And um, <laughs> I, I soon became a member of the Education Select Committee. And that, for me, was really important because I felt that um, as a member of the Select Committee, my... Uh, career, previous career, I could actually contribute with lived experience um, of, of, of the different issues, many of which, you know, were the different inquiries that I was involved with. And I found that it was massively hard work, but I found that incredibly rewarding and interesting. And hopefully um, I got that voice on behalf of teachers and uh, and communities and schools. Um, so that was really interesting. Um, but as well as that, um, I, I was parliamentary private secretary to John MacDonald, who was then the shadow chancellor. So it was a lot of work because obviously there were two roles as well as being a constituency MP. Um, and my job... Um, as John's PPS and it was a privilege to be his PPS he's an amazing man Um, and an amazing team at the time the Shadow Treasury team Um, what was to be uh, the communicator if you like the bridge between the Shadow Treasury team and John and the backbenchers and the PLP Um, so it was really important to me to cultivate um, uh, well, harmony, if you like, and, and and to make sure there was effective com- communication between the Shadow Treasury team uh, and the PLP. And while I was there, um, I do hope that I, d- I did a decent job of that. And even though I was um, very much of the left, um, at that time, I was genuine about wanting to bring the PLP together, genuine about saying, OK, yes, I'm on the left, but we have to do this together. And I, I did stand up at a PLP meeting on a Monday night. And it's pretty scary when you do that, because you have the Lords in there as well. Um, okay. And all the people, and it's, 
And the committee room is is like a debating chamber, a mini debating chamber, and you're opposite your own, you know, members. But it, it is it's very it's very staged and formal. But I stood up and I I did say that the main thing that unites us is is social justice, and we must remember that that's the core purpose. Uh, uh, of any socialist and of the Labour, any Labour MP. And I did speak on that and I spoke about um, Jeremy being a leader and it all seems easy when you're not it. But when I was head, um, I remember feeling very lonely at times because you're the one making those decisions. And I reminded them that Jeremy w was very alone making those decisions. Um, and I, I, so I I did actually, I didn't just um, leave and moan about, about the PLP. I did try, I really tried to speak in my own small way to bring people together. And it was only, um, and, and the culture, you could see that everybody's very polite with, a, you know, generally very polite with everybody in Parliament. Um, but you, you just sensed there were certain debates where some wouldn't come in and make a contribution. And um, it was kind of low level undermining a lot of the time, subtle things that when I was there, it, it, it wasn't always apparent to me because I was new and I couldn't believe that people on our own side wouldn't want it to work. I, could, I, I couldn't conceive um, have, having, you know, been being a socialist, I couldn't conceive that people within our own party might not want it to work. And it wasn't always apparent to me, this this low-level undermining. And it, in a way, that's what I mean about since I've come out and you, some of the um, evidence that's been submitted to the Ford inquiry um, ha has been revealed and people I've spoken to since, you you realise that loads of stuff was happening to undermine what we were trying to achieve. And I suppose, in a way, <laughs> I'm more angry than I was because I wasn't sure what, what was happening. I was so busy with the Education Select Committee doing my job in my constituency and supporting John and the Shadow Treasury team. And I, perhaps naively, I don't know, I didn't believe that people would be purposefully doing that but the longer I was there the more I saw these just subtle low-level stuff at first but obviously more going on um, and and this is why I do feel quite cross that we've not had um, uh, the Ford the report from the Ford inquiry um, because I think that that you know shows a lack of democracy in the, and, and lack of transparency in the party um, so yeah, uh, that that's that's how I felt the culture was um, PLP. Sure. That on a personal level, uh, on the surface, I got on with with most people or tried to, um, and got on very well with the Shadow Treasury team and some of my other colleagues. There's some lovely people still in the PLP, um, but but obviously there's a, a number um, that that didn't be. I don't think behaved honourably. Uh, and I think some continue to behave, um, in my opinion, dishonourably. <laughs> That's really fascinating to hear. It's, it's interesting to see inside the walls of Parliament a little bit through your eyes, because it's something that's so often veiled to people on the outside kind of thing, what that culture is like, or what the, particularly in the, the meetings of the, the Labour Party kind of thing. Um, yeah. There's one thing I wanted to ask you about your time in Parliament, it might be a little bit of a footnote, but it was it may even be an erroneous piece of information on your Wikipedia page, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I wanted to ask you something about the No Border Guards pledge. Is that is it correct that you may have you signed a pledge about? Um... Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, about um, about people, asylum seekers and- Yeah, so and, as an, um, yeah, yeah maybe being asked... my understanding is as, as an MP, not like um, at protecting maybe asylum seekers who are inside your in your constituency from deportation, I suppose. Um, I mean, I don't need you to speak at length about it if it's not something that... Um, well, uh, yeah. I, I, but, I mean, it, was just, it was very yeah, curious I mean, and I hadn't ever heard just, about it before and I was just wondering how maybe no, no, how many it was, people had signed was, that and yeah, whether that's I, quite I, a common still, thing. Um, not quite at the moment, but I still um, support um, 
uh, destitute asylum seekers Huddersfield Dash um, and um, uh, the clothing project for Sanctuary Kirklees. So uh, before I became an MP, um, I, I volunteered for Dash. Um, so obviously had um, relation, relationships with the people who uh, support uh, people who are placed in our community. Um, and, and, you know, some of them, oh, you know, are absolutely destitute. Um, mm -hmm. um, so I had personal experience of working with asylum seekers and um, and absolute, uh, absolutely heartbreaking circumstances for many of them. Um, so when this came up, I mean, obviously, as an MP, you sign a lot of EDMs and, um, of you know, different petitions. Um, but, um, but, but this in particular, we were being asked to report um, uh, people who've been placed in the community if there were questions about settled status, etc. And I, I, I was, I didn't see my role as policing um, people, but uh, for me, every human being has equal worth. And um, for me, it was important to say that is not my role. My role is to make sure that people are safe and housed and treated with respect and dignity. Um, so that's why I, I signed that. Yeah, it's really fascinating. It's something that um, maybe I don't think about very often, the role of the MP to represent the people in their community and going to that extent kind of thing. Um, it's laudable, I think, anyway, of an MP to, to sort of go to those lengths or put their constituents first in that way kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the, the other thing, you know, I feel really strongly about is the no recourse to public funds as well. You know, when people mm -hmm. have, they arrive with many skills, lots of professionals, you know, the contribution they can make to our communities and societies. And then they're, they're not allowed, you know, they, they, they're not allowed to, to seek support to enable them to then make that contribution. And it's so short sighted and so narrow minded and so um, callous and cruel, I think. Um, and I, I sometimes, you know, I have to keep going, but I sometimes despair about our society, you know. Um, but um, but yeah, that's another thing I feel quite strongly about. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I noticed on on my visa is that I saw that on the back when I got it. And I was like, oh, I wonder, I kind of didn't think twice about it, the no recourse to public funds. But I was like, oh, I wonder, I wonder why, I wonder what the point is, because it seems yeah. kind of counterintuitive almost. But it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's like I'm very much for universal basic income. Um, and, and that, again, is so short-sighted. I mean, furlough is what that is, really, this temporary uh, universal basic income for a lot of people. But if there's if people have more income, even if it's low income, they spend it. They spend it in our shop businesses, and that profits the local community. And it's really short-sighted um, that we've got now, you know, this in-work poverty we've got, and we've got people who are, well, you, you know, waiting with a begging bowl just for, to meet their basic needs and queuing up at food banks, you know. Anyway, I could talk about that forever. <laughs> it's just wrong. <laughs> yeah. No argument from us. <laughs> yeah, definitely not from me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I suppose you have already outlined um, the process of your disillusionment with the Labour Party. Um I wonder whether you'd outline like what led you to make that break and then also maybe what made uh, the the new project of the Northern Independence Party seem um, appealing to you, I suppose. Um, and maybe what um, the Northern Independence Party means by democratic socialism and what um, what that mm. political project might look like, I suppose. Yeah, um, lots of things. I mean, the immediate thing um, when I announced that, you know, I was leaving the Labour Party um, was people said, oh, it's because Jeremy Corbyn's lost the whip or, you know, she's she, she's angry because she's lost a seat and there were, you know, all these theories. But it wasn't one thing. It, it wasn't one thing. It, it was like a, a gradual process. And when, when Keir Starmer became leader... Um, and he stood on those 10 pledges that he made. One was to unite the party, of course. Um, the, I, 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 well, I mean, first of all, uh, Rebecca Long-Bailey, who um, I was informally kind of uh, working with and was friendly with um, when she was Shadow um, Secretary of State for Education, um, I, I just thought she was 
amazing in that role. It was short lived, of course, um, but she was just amazing. But she she was listening. She was intelligent. She was informed. And what she didn't know, she'd ask about. She wasn't arrogant. She went to the professionals. She wanted to work with professionals. She wanted to work with the teaching unions. And I felt really positive. You know, ever ever since I'd lost the election and Jeremy hadn't been leader, I felt really positive. And I was positive and genuine about wanting to support Keir Starmer. Really, really was genuine. Um, but then, then when Becky was sacked from the front bench, that for me was the first blow. Um, because she was one of the few front benchers who was a left winger for a start. Um, and, you know, if you look at what Joe Biden's, I don't agree with everything with Joe Biden, um, but but he did realise he needed to work with the left. And, and he is currently trying to do that and engage with Bernie, you know, in, in, in that way and, and the left in America. But Keir just doesn't seem to want to engage at all um, but it started with Rebecca Long Bailey being sacked and um, then we had the human rights bills going through parliament um, what we call the, the spy cops bill um, uh, you know the covert human intelligence bill um, um, <laughs> could it sound which, more sinister <laughs> well it does doesn't it and, yeah. and the overseas um, operations bill all of, all of these um, and, you know, currently we've got the right to protest bill, you know, or not protest bill uh, yeah. going through. So all of these bills, are, to me, the human rights bills, that naturally for me, the Labour Party should not be going with. Um, mm -hmm. And when I, I, I just saw, and then, of course, him really not showing opposition in terms of what was happening with COVID, um, saying that children should be back in school, agreeing with the government, um, all of these things. I, I was thinking, what? <laughs> um, so it, I, it was one thing after another. And then, of course, um, Jeremy not uh, having the whip suspended um, and then having gone through the disciplinary process and what have you, uh, there was political interference, in my opinion, with that, with the NEC ruling and the whip has still, to this day, not been returned to Jeremy. Although I've gone so far uh, in my disaffection with 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 Labour, I would prefer Jeremy to stay out. Uh, I, I know the demands to return the whip to Jeremy, but I, I would much prefer Jeremy to stay out and to to work at growing the democratic socialist movement which is what i'm about now which i'll come to come to later um, it, but but it, it it's um yeah so it was a lot of things and um at first when i left I, I felt dreadful it was i kept having to do these interviews to explain why you know why and it was very hard for me it was very kind of emotional time really um but but bit by bit I realised the more that Labour behaved in a way and the leadership of Labour behaved in a particular way, I realised this has been the right thing for me. And even though I was still in communication with a number of people in Parliament, um, and I did, I don't judge them, if the, the, some have decided to... to fight if you like from within you know it's it, it's our party some say and we're not we're not leaving it we it, it will come full circle and it will but i i'm afraid i couldn't i couldn't stay in 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 the party um so obviously a few months out of the party doing a lot of interviews um getting involved with with different projects to do with education etc um, so still very busy um, with with different different projects, as I say. Um, and then um, I saw um, on social media um, some uh, tweets from uh, Philip Proudfoot um, and um, this new uh, party um, that that was being suggested. In fact. Before MIP, I think it was before, yeah, it was, um, I met with Alex May, Mays, who is the founder of the Breakthrough Party based in Manchester. So I, I, I'd actually met 
both youngish uh, men had uh, both, uh, and currently I'm still working with both of them um, informally, you know, um, just as much support as I can give. Um, but um, amazing respect for both of them. Um, but I had already been in discussions with Alex May and I'd, I'd done an interview with Alex um, because he asked me to. And um, so I knew about the breakthrough party actually before I knew about NIP. Um, then I then I saw the post from and and I, I knew the by election was coming up um, in Hartlepool, um, and so I said, look, if you want some support, if you want some help, I had a Zoom meeting with himself and the chair of NIP. Um, if you want some support, then I, I, you know I, I will give any support that that you need. And um, they they suggested that if I could endorse the party, etc., it would help with the well, I suppose um, the PR, the, the publicity for the, this new party, um, which I agreed to do, um, and and tweeted and did all of that. But really engaged with Philip from the the, the word go really realised there was intellect behind the thinking, the policy making, very democratic as well in the, the manifesto that was being put together um, what was in consultation with the membership. Um, and I, I really like the inclusivity of it. Um, and I really like the thought that was was going into it as well. And as I say, the intellect in it. Um, but then as the by-election, and it just evolved that um, there, there were two other people who, who went for being the candidate. I hadn't originally intended to be the candidate for an IP. Um, it, it, it came about from, from them saying, if you are our candidate, that will help this party to be put on the map, as it were, and it will give us such a start. And I'm, I've had to take it on the chin from people who, who you know, trolls and have to say it's the Labour people who are really vicious, the worst kind of trolling, I have to say, has come from... <laughs> centrists who are just having a go all the time about me standing splitting the splitting the you know labor vote when you look at what happened um but i knew perfectly well there was absolutely no chance of us winning um i knew that i was putting myself out there but i knew we'd get the bigger interviews i knew we'd get the profile um, and so, I, in a way, I kind of sacrificed myself to, <laughs> to, to, to do it. But now you see people who, who are, they're obviously threatened by these smaller parties because they, I'm fronting quite a bit of it, and Philip is, um, and Alex is for breakthrough. But, but NIP, because of our social media platform and the strength of that, and it's a very young um, I'm the honorary oldie, you see. <laughs> um, it's it's a young but inclusive party, um, and um, so on that there were 16 candidates in the Hartlepool by-election, a number of independents, um, because the party is still with the electoral uh, commission seem to be sitting on the application for registration i don't know i don't know what's going on yeah, there i saw that today it's still not registered and still not registered which is don't quite shocking why. um I, but it, that that wasn't a help because on that 16 candidates there's just my name for anybody who doesn't know left politics would say who's this woman you know it's not um yeah, so it's a real shame if you're trying to build the platform of the party you can't then stand under the, under the banner of the party or at least appear on the ballot so people no, have to learn your just, name specifically. If people had have seen Northern Independence Party next to my name I think some more would have got it. We wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have got you know thousands and thousands of votes but we'd have got more and um, so obviously what my people who don't like me or feel threatened by the movement are using the 250 votes and the loss of the deposit as an excuse to have a go uh, at the moment. People who get politics and what the electoral system is understand what happened there. Um, and it is part of a, 
why I'm involved with NIP is not just NIP. I'm involved with the development of a democratic socialist movement. So I'm working with a number of of the smaller left parties. And my job, I suppose bringing the old head teacher back in, is to bring people together. Um, and I'm trying to do that in a, in a small way. Um, and um, that we've had our first meet, private meeting, and we've got another one uh, in two weeks, in about two weeks, um, about discussions about how we can work together. Do we stand people in the future, where do we stand, people? Um, and I, for me, th this idea of a progressive left alliance um, is is what's really winding up <laughs> uh, Labour and and the centrists in particular, because Mandelson said, "Well, they've nowhere else to go. You know, they've got to vote Labour. They've got, you know, well, they have got." And they will have somewhere to go. And younger people, especially like yourselves, they're you were the ones I'm doing this for. Um, because it's it's you that's being impacted on, or your age group in particular, um, the the most well, in the most negative way, um, with you know, no affordable hat, things I took for granted, and people older than me, the baby boomers, took for granted the free education, the no no tuition fees, affordable housing, guaranteed jobs, those were taken for granted. Um, and you, your generation cannot, that's been taken away from you at the moment. And that is what, that is what, the, you know, the democratic socialist movement and what Labour should be addressing. Um, and that's why I'm so thankful I'm not with Labour at the moment, because I just think you know that this is not what what socialism is about and um, so I'm quite excited now I feel like I've really got and standing for NIP was great I mean people who ha are having a go and um, they're not going to make me feel negative about that campaign because that that group of people that have formed NIP are wonderful socialists and the spirit of that campaign was brilliant I, I enjoyed it more than well I loved the 2017 campaign with Jeremy and, oh, yeah. and, and that and that manifesto but since then um and 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 before that I didn't you know I really didn't enjoy there was a lot of with labor that the, it needs systemic change the whole structure of the party needs changing it's you know campaigning it's, it's so coercive it's so targets and testing and you know it is it's a bit like the govian school model it's it's mm -hmm. kind of how many doors have you knocked on this is what you're going to say this you know don't work that's why we had that whole group of activists in 2017 um out there because people believed in the manifesto and people uh, it came together in their thousands um and that's what's hemorrhaging from the labor party now i believe um and uh, but but what i felt with nip was that belief in in the democratic process of the policy making um, and the belief in, in that we can we can change things and yeah it's a just an emerging party um, but it you know it's it's growing in numbers um, and membership um, and we've got members all over the country because you've got a lot of northerners that have had to leave their home to get to get the the work um, and um, and and so they, they they still have that um, interest in in. In investment in the north and and the heritage so it's yeah it was a, it was a great campaign with wonderful people um and i don't regret doing it i do sometimes when those trolls are having a go at me but i just admit but, <laughs> um, but, what, just block them just just hit the block yeah, button well, i started blocking i didn't used to block i used to kind of mute and you know but <laughs> the thing is i always try and be really really courteous on you know i might have a go because i'm making a point but I always try and be really um, courteous on social media. But it, it, what was interesting was recently, because um, I made a comment about the by-election in Buckley and Spen, um, that it, it was 
it was like they're not even intelligent enough to organize a pylon that isn't so obvious that they've all been on a WhatsApp group because <laughs> they got put on about a couple of days before and it was a response two days later where they all had a go at me at the same time. And it was just <laughs> so apparent that it'd been organized. Um, clearly nothing organic about their movement. <laughs> It was just, yeah. Um, uh, so, well, I people say to me, you you must be doing something good if you've rattled the cage to that extent. Because they're quite funny. They say, NIP are nothing. You only got 250 <laughs> votes. And then they'll say, you are destroying the Labour Party. <laughs> I think, what, what am I doing? And, and, doing and they clearly spend an entire evening atting you all day. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, clearly deserving yeah, so, of a lot more attention than they want to say. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, but um, if you hold, I mean, the thing is, um, I, I believe if you hold, I'm not saying I don't make mistakes sometimes. Sometimes you make a wrong judgment call. I, I'm human, you know. And I, But what I try and do is admit if I think I've done something wrong and apologise. Um, and it, I, I, I think like we saw Howard Beckett do um, the other day over a tweet um, that, you know, um, what a leader he will be, I think, um, if, you know, as leading Unite as a union. I think he's a man of integrity and strength and courage. Um, but, yeah, I, I admit if I make I make a mistake um, with things. Um, but I honestly think if you are authentic and you I have right on your side and you, you believe you're doing the best for the people, um, then it spurs me on. And so when I see these people doing what they're doing and I can see that it's organised, um, I won't say that if I'm tired and, you know, I've had a tough day that it doesn't get to you. It does. Um, but but I try and rise above it because I think to myself, well, I've lived my life educating and caring for children and then you know believing in socialism and social justice and uh just look at my track record and um i do be still believe in what i'm doing and i'll i'm going to carry on uh because like tony yeah. benson you know you've got that fire um you know of justice um in your heart and um well the struggle continues i suppose yeah, absolutely. It's an interesting strategy to be authentic. I think that's maybe one that a lot of people could learn from. Um, <laughs> I, I had I had one question about, I, I'm, I'm really interested in kind of the coalition that you're talking about, um, building with different smaller democratic socialist parties. Um, and it is interesting, when I first came across you all on Twitter, um, I'm from the States and- Where about seeing, you? I'm from a little town just outside of Los Angeles, so California. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. Mm. And you're here with this weather. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're hoping at least down here, Dan and I are down south. We're hoping we won't get much more rain in, in the future. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but it's funny, like when I first came across you all on Twitter, I think I saw the name Northern Independence Party and I wasn't necessarily expecting you all to be um, democratic socialists. Um, and so I think it's, it's interesting. And I wonder if maybe a lot of people if they had put the um, name of the party on the ballot. I wonder kind of how a lot of people would have thought of that if they'd never come across you before or or really known what the NIP stands for. So I'm kind of interested in this balance between like, um, I suppose just as an outsider, what maybe makes the North um, kind of, at least in theory, kind of like a bastion of democratic socialism. And why did you really tie those two things together, um, Northern independence and socialism? Yeah, I think it's, it, I think the independence, I'm going to be really frank with you, and Philip and I have had quite lengthy discussions about this, um, that the independence bit is the tricky bit. <laughs> um, because my, um, my original thoughts are, have always been for federalism and localism. And, and it, it's taking that uh, concentration and control um, certainly on the economy in particular, from Westminster and that decision-making from Westminster. And at first, we had some lively discussions, uh, Philip and I, about the independence, because I, I was suggesting it's it's maybe one step too far, you know, that for people to, to say, well, we've got poverty down south, we've got, you know. But then I'm seeing what the SNP, who had 
I think, well, certainly UKIP had fewer votes than the NIP had in that uh, by-election. Mm-hmm. SNP, so few votes just a few years ago. And look how they've grown. Within two years, Scotland could be independent. Wales could follow the suit. I know Labour have done okay, but that's because of socialist policies uh, with Mark. Um, we could have a united Ireland. That leaves Little England still run by Johnson and Co. And <laughs> Northern Region, just think about that for Northerners. Um, where I always say the graph's done up north and the profit from it goes down to Westminster and decision, and then we're left with crumbs from the Westminster table um, back up north. So bit by bit, I've been kind of converted to the idea that it really depends what happens with the devolved powers. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of thinking, watch this space with this. I mean, I short term, for me, it would be that idea of like Germany, that federalism, that idea of uh, you know social enterprise, community wealth building with the localism, and the funding decisions made um, regionally and locally. Um, but long term, that may be a necessity if Scotland are independent, Wales is independent, Ireland is united. All of these things are possible. And what irony is that when you've got people wrapping themselves in the Union Jack and those very people are going to tear that apart um, with, with the way that they have behaved um, and their policies and actions. Um, so I think it's really, really interesting what's happening with politics at the moment. So the a long answer to a short question the independence part I've moved towards and thinking this is the long-term goal um, that it may be necessary for people in the north to have to seek that independence um, and NIP uh, or as Philip talks about his North- Northumbria with it with his flag um, <laughs> it's not, we might mock and joke about it now but but actually Let's see what happens with Scotland and Wales and Ireland. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I do think it's very interesting. I think the other bit of it that you were asking me about how it sits with socialism kind of thing, I get that as well because, you, you know, you can say that, that but I do believe in, in, in the ability to self-determine. And I do believe um, that... The, the, the North in particular has always been internationalist um, and has welcomed, if, if you look at the Industrial Revolution, if you look at what's happened through history, has has welcomed people. And we've been talking already about asylum seekers and and making people citizens of the world, isn't it? You know, it's Thomas Paine stuff. Um, you know, so I think that, um, you know, that is not what NIP is about um it, it is not UKIP. Um <laughs> it is inclusive um and it is welcoming and it is internationalist. And would we're through Brexit now, we're not really. I mean <laughs> the government would like to pretend we are, we, there's all sorts of problems with that. But I think that um uh, you know t- we would want the most positive relationship with all countries of the world, but especially with Europe. Um, so I think that needs saying, um, and, and, and uh, yeah, the, the independence is a challenge um, uh, for many. And it, um, some have said to me, "Oh, Sam, it's, it's one step too far," you know. <laughs> um, but but I can see that this is something for the future, and I think we need to see how this pans out. I think it's definitely a good idea to, or good strategy to pitch a radical demand even in advance of what you think you can get in the short term and also yeah. i think it provides a very good name for a party and also it's a very pithy sort of shorthand explanation of what the party is for or about kind of thing yes. you could go around yes. the week really trying to explain for devolution or for federalism but like um, that's right it's definitely I mean- a clear pitch i guess yeah, well, I was interviewed by Politics Joe, and it's kind of like one of the questions. It's like out UKIP in UKIP, but <laughs> flat left. 
yeah. you know, they had a very simple message, you know, get Brexit done kind of thing, get us out of mm. Europe. And this is like, we want independence for the North. And people in the South have said, and we've had we've had some Labour politicians on the left say, but we have poverty in, in parts of London. We have poverty in the coastal regions. Yes, of course we do. But we have to start somewhere ending inequality. Um, and as a northerner, I'm saying that north-south divide has gone on decade after decade and we need to address it. So um, I'm not negating the fact that there's poverty and inequality across our country and across the world. Um, but but this is this is the starting point. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, in interesting. But um, moving on to the um, the smaller parties and what I'm, what I'm trying to do at the moment, as I said, I, I actually worked with, with Alex Mays from Breakthrough before Philip. I, I don't think a lot of people are aware I've never of heard of Breakthrough. No, well, um, but Breakthrough, a uh, fabulous group of people, again, uh, but based in, and, and I can see Alex and Philip are getting a really good relationship there, you know, working together. Um, and um, I, I breakthrough based, as I say, in Manchester, um, looking hopefully for the future at, at the Amersham and Chesham. They're standing Carla um, in Gregory, I think she's called, um, in um, Amersham and Chesham, which is a Tory seat, but it's their first. And again, dipping their toe uh, in, into it all as a new party. Uh, but really well thought through, again, democratic. They've just is issued their policy pledges this week. Um, so it's it's parties like NIP, Breakthrough, Left Unity um, uh, are involved, uh, Tusk, um, Resist, um, all of these parties, and there's more, of course, um, who um, are showing interest um, and Compass as well, um, who previously were, were just involved with Labour, but now, uh, you know, are, are in talks with lots of the parties on the left. So, um, yeah, we, we've had one private meeting and um, we we are going to meet again. Um, the decision was made to um, stand a candidate from Breakthrough at the um, uh Cheshire and Amersham in the forthcoming by-election. Um, I've been getting all this trolling for, you know, kind of, you know, why have you commented on uh, the battle in Spain? The irony is that my voice was used to say we shouldn't be standing a candidate in battle in Spain <laughs> um, because the far right could, could make headway there. Um, so we need to be thoughtful and sensitive about where we stand candidates um, because we may not be happy with Labour but it certainly is not my intention to enable far-right candidates um, to scoop up the votes and I think there's some irony in Labour centrists having a go at me making out I'm undermining Batley and Spen when I've actually spoken up to prevent the smaller parties from splitting the left vote, <laughs> which, you know, is, um, they're unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, so the idea is we're in talks, um, also um, obviously not a political party, but um interested in what what the discussions are about is the peace and justice project which is uh jeremy corbyn's um uh, kind of project um so um i mean they're not a party but they're they're projects that they're involved in um are, you know are very interesting for the movement as it were um so uh, i i think it's quite exciting what what could grow from this um and i think it in a way, what we're hoping is that it it pushes Labour to to address the the socialist agenda um, because at the moment they seem so far away from it. So what we hope in this this progressive alliance of the left or PAL, um, as as I've called it, is is the kind of growing movement to say, look, this is 
this is what we believe in. And if we stand candidates in these different seats as, as they come up, um, then it's it's giving people a choice. It's 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 the Mandelson saying they've nowhere to go. They've got to vote Labour. Well, no, they don't anymore because there's these young growing move this young growing movement that that actually is saying socialists have got somewhere to go and somewhere to vote and someone to vote for that is going to represent their interests and their concerns and their and their beliefs absolutely that's fantastic yeah yeah i think that's a it's coming upon time for us i think it is yeah. i think we have we have one more question for yeah, you yeah go on uh, my my uh i i told my partner that i would ask this because she's actually from huddersfield um, ah. and i'm actually going up there on this weekend which should be very exciting and oh, she yeah. told me you might even get some sunshine. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. She told me the proper way to pronounce Slawit, so I don't sound like an idiot. Slawit, uh, yes, Slawit. yeah. I'm in Linthwit, which is Lengthway, and uh, gotcha. yes, yeah. Gotcha. Well, our question <laughs> is uh, to actually define for us to put the put it to bed once and for all where the North starts. <laughs> well, the, the only the only way I can say is that where, where Philip has um, defined <laughs> sure. North. Umbria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was enough. Philip's definition. So that's uh, the the um, where the Peak District, you know, uh, High Peak is, um, and Cheshire <laughs> along there. So it's 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 along there. So, but you know, um, when I was in Hartlepool, I talked to this wonderful old gentleman, um, and he said, "Well, where are you actually from?" So. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I was born in Manchester, and I said, and I've lived in Combe Valley for thirty years. And um, he said, he, he said that's that's not north, that's south. <laughs> <laughs> my so my joke, it's relative, my, isn't it? <laughs> my joke has always been that the north starts twenty miles south of whoever you're asking and where they live. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's I was once sort of when I... for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was once told when I first got here uh, by a southerner that the north starts in Luton. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is all relative. He was quite genuine when he said, "You're not northern," you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, but uh, well, I hope you've um, you found what I've had to say useful. Absolutely, um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much well, for coming on. Both. Um, yeah, get, send me the link. I'd, I'd, I always like to uh, have a look, and uh, I've got a, uh, our podcast with Clive Lewis uh, tomorrow. Um, oh, uh, we're going to be asking him about. Well, I want him to share his vision for a Progressive Alliance. He and I are yep. both we're good friends, and uh, his idea of a Progressive Alliance is a little bit different to mine, though, because I think he's thinking I'm more about the Greens and the Liberals and um, whereas mm, I think we'll need a discussion on that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, we stand with you on that sentiment, I think. <laughs> but I do appreciate his campaigning for electoral reform, which is something I wish we could have definitely. About, but, Clive, um, Clive's point. intellect and he he's open minded to the fact Labour can't stay the way they are. That's 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 the thing about Clive um, that he, he, as I say, he has that intellect, but he's also he listens um, and he he takes on board, uh, you know, this idea. Of, well, of yeah, of electoral constitutional change, electoral reform, and and that Labour cannot just stay as it was. Um, so a lot of respect for Clive. Yeah. Anyway, good luck with everything, you two. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. And thank you, you with so your much. podcast as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, bye. We'll be following everything very closely. So <laughs> yeah, thanks right. again. Take care now. Yeah, bye. -bye. bye.